Now, coming up in about 20 minutes, we'll go right back to your calls, Rich and Wildman and others that are patiently holding. Talking about this Ebola outbreak in Africa now coming to the U.S. and the president won't to try to stop flights into the country, even though that was the default with the CDC previously. Governor Jindal has called for that. We are joined by Representative Walter B. Jones uh, from North Carolina. And, of course, uh, he's one of the few Ron Paul types we've still got in Congress and is leading the charge up there on so many issues uh, that are near and dear to the Constitution and Bill of Rights. But he has introduced legislation this year that's now gotten a lot of attention. And we've had a lot of different military people on and, and, and whistleblowers who have seen the 28 pages of the 9-11 report showing clearly the Saudis were involved and our government knew and basically had a stand down. He's been working to get that released and he joins us to talk about that and other issues. So, uh, Congressman Jones, thanks for coming on. Alex, delighted to do it, and I want to thank you. Uh, this is an important issue because for our country, if the American people don't know the truth about 9-11, there is no hope for our nation, in my opinion. So I'm delighted to be on your show. Well, thank you, sir. You know, it's perfect timing to have you on. It's coming out that our own government with NATO has been arming ISIS uh, they've been uh, th th that our so-called Gulf state partners have been arming them. This is just a replay of what we've seen before. Alex, there's no question about it. That's why I have. It's a totally different issue. But very quickly, I have joined some of my colleagues asking John Boehner to bring us back. Let's have a debate on this Syrian situation. And I'm very disappointed that uh, Speaker Boehner will not do that. And he keeps saying, well, if the president asks us to bring you back, we will. And I've said to Mr. Boehner in letter form, Mr. Boehner, you have the authority as leader of the House to bring us back at any time to let the House debate and discuss. Well, let's talk about that a little bit more before we go to break and come back with the 9-11 Commission redacted 28 pages. Okay. Uh, we've seen the British military come out and say that the, the British government should stop arming the radicals. We've seen our own military, as you know, uh, on the Hill in close, closed hearings saying the same thing. I'm proud that our military has been against this from the beginning, but our political leaders uh, on both sides of the aisle have been for it. Well, Alex, it's very disappointing. We did have a debate uh, on the floor of the House about arming or training the uh, Syrian rebels, and uh, sadly it passed. Uh, and I spoke out in, in opposition to it with the two minutes I had on the floor, and other members in both parties spoke out against it. And I do not understand why the president continues to bypass Congress. He bombed Libya, which was unnecessary, uh, and he continues to want to bomb in Syria. I think it raises legal questions, but that's another issue. I'm not an attorney, as you know. But to me, Congress is not following the Constitution, and therefore I'm very disappointed in the leadership that would not allow us to have a debate and actually wrote a letter to Mr. Boehner uh, last week asking that when we come back for what's called the lame duck session, we can at least have a two- or three-day day debate on this Syrian situation because, in my opinion, uh, the policy is the failed policy to begin with. Jones.house.gov, and when we come back, we're going to get into declassify the national campaign to reveal the 28 censored pages of the 9-11 Commission, but uh, didn't you also introduce legislation that if Obama continues to launch wars without congressional approval, that impeachment would get triggered, sir? Well, I'm, I'm sad to tell you I did introduce it, but I can't even get a hearing on the House side, and we're controlled by Republicans, and they won't even give me a hearing on that issue. Incredible. Well, doing the right thing is what counts, and just like Ron Paul would introduce stuff and no one would co-sponsor it down the road, he got a lot of co-sponsors, and I know you are getting a lot of support for your declassification uh, movement of the 28 pages. We'll talk about that with Congressman Walter Jones, a true hero of telling the truth and liberty. Uh, the Republican from North Carolina will be right back. It's jones.house.gov. Stay with us. Obama has promised to bankrupt coal in this country that supplies, well, did supply about 60% of our power, now about 40. Energy prices have almost doubled in the last six years, electricity. Well, the Democrat Senate candidate, Allison Grimes, a Grimes staff caught on hidden camera. She's lying about support for coal industry. U.S. Senate candidate, Allison Lundgren, Grimes is lying about her support for the state's coal industry, according to Kentucky 
uh, Democrats, including members of her campaign team, who were caught on a hidden camera video saying, yeah, we go out, we shoot guns in public, we say we're conservative, but once we get in, we're going to bankrupt coal. Well, Obama famously said that as well. So that's what they're doing. I don't own one stock in coal. I own zero coal. But I'm against shutting it down because it's clean. It powers our country. I don't want to get off down a rabbit trail with uh, Congressman Walter B. Jones of North Carolina, who's introduced legislation to impeach Obama if he continues to launch wars without congressional approval. He's introduced legislation that's getting a lot of co-sponsors as well to release the 28 pages of the 9-11 Commission report, jones.house.gov. But let me just ask you briefly what you think about coal being shut down in this country, throw a wild card at you, a curveball, and separately about uh, the Ebola flights being allowed to come in out of West Africa. What's your take on both those issues, sir? Well, I think any uh, opportunity to use any type of energy to help the American people, as long as it's clean and safe, and that's been proven about the coal industry, they make gigantic gains in trying to make sure that their product is clean. And I think they've done a great job. I think it should be a way that we can have that option. And as far as Ebola, I have already read to the uh, White House, joined many of my colleagues to say, stop letting these people come into this country. So you're on record with colleagues writing a letter to the president saying, uh, stop the flights. Absolutely. And there's almost no media coverage of this. And the head of the CDC is out saying, quote, it will make Ebola spread if we don't let them come in. I mean, that is the most asinine thing I've ever heard. I would agree with you, and Alex, that is why many of my colleagues uh, from North Carolina and other states are asking the administration to use the authority they have to protect the American people from any type of disease that's got the potential to be an epidemic. And uh, I, I don't, I can't explain. You've been around a while, and does it seem like we're living in the twilight zone? I've never seen government act this way, this reckless on so many fronts. Our southern borders wide open while they're saying ISIS terror attacks are imminent. Uh, it's just bizarre. Well, you know, I've made the statement many times that uh, I believe that we are at a crossroads in this country, and if we don't make the right decision, uh, in the next presidential election, there will be no hope for America. And I'm a big Rand Paul supporter, by the way. Well, God bless you, my friend. I tell you, it's 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 just so frightening when you have children or grandchildren. It really is. To and just Alex, really another subject, very quickly, the debt of this nation in the year 2000, our debt in in America was 5.6 trillion dollars. Today, it is over $17.7 trillion. How much longer economically can a country continue to borrow money from foreign governments to pay its bills before it collapses? I don't know. Then you got Ebola, and then you got all these other issues. I mean, we could do another show if you want to on the 28 pages, because I will tell you the truth. That in, that in itself, the 28 pages, the American people, the families of 9-11 have a right to see what's in there. And uh, I can honestly tell you, when you've got the former two chairmen, uh, Senator Bob Graham, retired now, lives in Florida, from Florida, and Richard Shelby, still in the United States Senate, and their inquiry commission said that, yes, it should be declassified. Then you've got uh, Hamilton and, and Kane, uh, recently, as, as recently as three weeks ago, uh, former members of the, of the House and then the former governor of New Jersey, Kane saying it should be declassified, and there's no reason the American people should not see the truth. It was George Bush that classified this information. Mr. Obama owes nothing to George Bush, but he does owe to the families of 9-11 the right to see the 28 pages and certainly the American people. And Mr. Obama has told the families twice that he would allow them to see the 28 pages. And Steve Lynch a Democrat and myself have written to President Obama in April of this year reminding him that he made this promise and he needs to keep his word to the 9-11 family. Uh, and uh, we stand on top of that. We call the White House every now and then. We have been told as recently as two weeks ago that in the next four or five weeks they would give us an answer to our letter. Extremely powerful. And that's the main reason uh, Congressman Walter B. Jones has joined us today.
is to talk about what is what he can say is in those pages. I've talked to military sources, other congressional sources. You were on at the first of the year when you first introduced the legislation. What can you tell us without violating supposed national security laws that they use to hide all these crimes? What can you tell us is in the 28 pages? Well, what I can tell you in the 28 pages is nothing about national security. It is about relationships, and it could be somewhat embarrassing to the Bush administration. But I'm telling you that the American people need to know those people in Saudi Arabia who were not our friends at that time. And I'm not going to the very top of the Saudi leadership, but I'm just saying that the Saudis uh, uh, need to let the American people know who within their country, who was involved in financing this 9-11 attack. And that, that's been in the press. I'm not telling people anything that I read because that's been in the press. That's speculation. That's right. We've done two press conferences with family members who lost loved ones. One in March, Thomas Massey was there, Steve Lynch, myself, and, and family members. And we did another one three days before 9-11 in Washington, D.C., with family members. And they're calling on the president to keep his word to them that they have a right to see the 28 pages, and the American people do also. Now... If the 28 pages comes out, what do you expect will come of that? You know what will come of it? It will be exactly what it needs to be. It helps educate the American people to what happened on 9-11, and it doesn't do anything any more or, or, or less. And I would tell you, uh, Alex, that if people really want to, Bob Graham down in Florida, I've talked to him, he's been, he Skyped during one of our interviews to, to give his call to the president to declassify. I have spoken to Senator Manchin just two weeks ago, as a matter of fact. I've spoken to Senator Paul about it. The American people need to see this information. If it was national security issues involved, I would not be on your show today. It's only about relationships. Well, look at how Vice President Biden apologizes uh, this weekend to the Prince of Qatar. Uh, over coming out and saying that, that our, quote, allies should stop arming ISIS. It's on record they're arming ISIS. So how have we gotten to the point that we're so controlled by these Arab states that they can be funding al-Qaeda under the name ISIS and our vice president has to apologize when he states the truth? Alex, that's why, again, I think that America needs the kind of leadership that Iran Paul, just like his father Ron Paul, would have led this nation to help us to understand that we have a constitution, and if we don't follow the constitution, then we're headed for worse times than what we see today, and it's not really good right now either. I, I don't understand why. I mean, this is the way I feel about it. First of all, we had no business going into Iraq. We would be better off with Saddam Hussein in leading the people of Iraq. He understood his country a lot better than the Bush people did. We have created the problems we've got in the Middle East right now by going into Iraq. Uh, Obama should not have bombed Libya and taken out Gaddafi. That country is about to fall apart right now as well. We need to start taking care of our own problems here in America, fix our problems with the border, make sure that we protect people from diseases coming into this country. We need to stop worrying about the world and fix our own problems right here in America. That's right. Even the New York Times admits that ISIS ammunition had U.S. origins. And this goes right back to the same 9-11 issues. They're creating and, and aiding these monsters so that they can be used as a pretext to take American liberty away. Congressman Jones, thank you so much for the time, and I'd love to get you back up uh, to cover the waterfront anytime. And, and I appreciate your leadership uh, there in the House. Uh, you just absolutely stand on principle in the Bill of Rights and Constitution. And I know there's a lot of new people uh, getting into Congress as well. I've seen the Republican leadership, but the Democrats try to block the Tea Party's ascension. Uh, but, but we need the new blood. We need yeah. the Republican leadership to stop blocking uh, a libertarian conservative uh, takeover. What is your gut and what's the word, the feeling on the Hill at the Senate? Do you think the Democrats are going to lose the Senate? 
I think there's still a 50-50 chance that could happen, and I would tell you that uh, we need to change the leadership in the House, and we got a small group working together. We, we've got a mountain to climb, but we need to change the leadership uh, in the House, and we need to get people who understand there is a Constitution and you can't be bought by money. Who do we, I mean, you could be a great speaker of the House. I mean, how do we get rid of Boehner, who funded Obamacare and protects Obama and supports all these new wars and supports arming ISIS? I mean, how, how do we get rid of Boehner? Well, we're trying. We've got a small group of about seven. I will not call their names. You can understand that. Your listeners can understand. But I have been told that there are three different groups. I'm not, but in one group, I don't know who is, is in the other two groups. But we need 20 to 25 Republicans that will stand up on the day we're sworn in and not call the name of John Boehner, and then we can stop it and get it going to a second round, and then somebody will emerge. Well, as soon as you can, I'd like to have you back up about that for another 15, 20 minute interview. Jones.house.gov. You can find his uh, Twitter, uh, Representative Walter Jones, uh, as well, a lot of excellent articles and videos on the sites. Thank you so much for the time, sir. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure, Alex. God bless America. Bye -bye. God bless. God bless America. God bless you. There goes Congressman Jones. We'll be back with your phone calls on Ebola and more. Stay with us. Apocalypse scenario, close quote is what the top professor virologist is warning of. Apocalypse scenario, discoverer of Ebola virus fears that it could mutate. Professor warns of humanitarian catastrophe. That just went up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Another headline, journalist with Ebola arrives at Nebraska hospital. Another headline, cop threatens to take man's baby to child services over refusal to show ID. Nervousness could be a uh, cause to have your kid taken. Uh, I tell you, and meanwhile, there are just crack houses full of little kids everywhere. That's my issue with Child Protective Services is they'll leave a kid with obviously super abusive people, and then they'll take kids away because they played in a park 100 feet away. It's just... You know, a 10-year-old. It's just so politically correct. I can't figure it out. Just happened here in Texas. Yeah, just happened here in Texas, famously. I mean, it's just, it's wild. Two-year-old. Now, uh, I want to go to your phone calls, as I said. Breaking, Paul Watson's article should be up there any minute, dealing with the CIA insider who predicted that they would launch an Ebola false flag. In fact, it just went up, red-linked, CIA insider warned of Ebola false flag in September. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to go to your calls now. When we're done with the first round of calls, I'll play that clip and get to that article. Uh, Rich in Oregon, thanks for holding. You got cut off by a break earlier. Uh, go ahead and make your points. Uh, my point is, is the Ebola obviously is a false flag. You have plenty of whistleblowers. You have plenty of evidence of that. You also have plenty of support from your listeners and also to the giving back to the documents that you have. My question is, or maybe just get your take on it. Why isn't somebody paying for this? That's what I've been asking is we know they're bringing people in that have Ebola. We know they're not quarantining those that had it, their families that could be spreading it. Uh, we just know that they've violated all the protocols and law, all the defaults, and it's like leaving the hatch open on a submarine when you submerge. It is totally criminal, and I think they're just setting the precedent because a bunch of lawyers run this administration to just get away with bloody murder. This is what criminals love to do. When they don't get caught or don't get in trouble, what do they do? They escalate. They get more bold. They get more out of control. They start taunting. This is basic criminology. Uh, and I think they want to use an Ebola outbreak to basically bring in martial law. That could be what's happening here. What do you think? I hope not. That's a scary thing, you know. I just, you know, I just don't know what to say. I, I... All I can say is I appreciate everything you do, Alex. Keep up the good work. I mean, there's really nothing else I could say about it. Eh? I'm shell-shocked as well. I mean, I woke up at like 4 a.m. this morning, and I just laid there staring out the window at the stars, and I was just thinking to myself, why is this happening? Why is the elite? So, listen, they shouldn't have given him a visa. The guy, it turns out, knew he had Ebola and came here. Of course, where, where would, where, what do you think is going to happen with countries with millions of people now 
set to get Ebola, according to the computer models. They're going to try to go to a country that has medical care. And they can't get into Europe. They can't get in the Middle East. They're going to come here. They can't get into Asia. They're going to come here because America is a joke. And I don't say that with enjoyment. I love this country. But we're just such a joke now. Wild man in Texas, you're on the air. God bless you, brother. God bless you. Go ahead. Uh, and by the way, I'm a Monteith as well. There ain't too many of us left, but it, but at any rate. Uh, oh, oh, so you're a, a, your last name's a Monteith as well. Yes, sir, it is. Isn't that an old I Scottish mean, uh, nobility name? Yes, it is. It yeah. is Scottish. Uh, as a matter of fact, they wrote a book about the Monteiths, and uh, uh, my dad had got it, but it got stolen from when he was uh, when he passed away in '95. He was a year younger than Dr. Stan Monteith, and it made me kind of look because that picture you had of him. Uh, he had my granddad's nose, uh, Dr. Stan Monteith did, so it makes me wonder if it, he wasn't a cousin of my dad. I'd have to look into it. Who knows? Find out. But a, yeah, a, a, noble, a noble line. Yeah, yeah, it is. I can't hold a candle to him or you, either one, but I'm I'm spreading the word up here in Amarillo as fast and hard as I can. People think I've just escaped from the nut hut, but I really don't care because people got to wake up. I don't want to cut you off. Stay there. I'm going right back to you, wild man. Then Truth Raider, Lab Rat, Shane, and others. I want to hear from EMTs. We had some of those calls yesterday. Your take on all this, 800 259 Globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs and then concentrated for maximum potency potency super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals super male vitality by infowars life is so powerful that i only take half the recommended dose for a limited time we are offering 15 percent off super male vitality at infowarslife.com to introduce you to this powerful supplement visit infowarslife.com today to secure your super male vitality infowarslife.com 